My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In today's Gospel, the Pharisees and scribes complain about Jesus, as they habitually do. And our Lord takes what's meant to be an insult, what's meant to be a condemnation, and turns it into a kind of mission statement. The tax collectors and sinners were also drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus addressed this parable to them. What man among you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. And over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. So the Pharisees and scribes basically say, hey, Jesus is welcoming sinners. That's not good. He should know that they're sinners and separate himself from them. And Jesus says, not only do I welcome sinners, but I go looking for them. This is what I've come to do. In another passage, when he meets Zacchaeus and spends time with Zacchaeus in his house. And the same complaint is lodged against him that he went into the house of a man who's a sinner. Jesus says, The Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus, thank you for loving us in this way. You don't just love us in our virtue. You don't just love us in our correctness. But because we start out as sinners, then we always have this battle with sin. We always have some trace of sinfulness in us throughout this life. We constantly need this dimension of your love, your mercy, and your desire to convert us. You're seeking us out in our sinfulness, in our being lost. And what a beautiful thing, those images of Jesus as a good shepherd with that lost sheep around his neck, holding those legs tight to his chest so he can securely, firmly carry that sheep back to the flock. This is us, Jesus. We're lost in our sinfulness. We're ugly in our rebellion against you. And yet you love us in our waywardness and you love us in our imperfection. There's a realty company here in the United States And their slogan is, we buy ugly houses. And a number of years back, they had billboards all over the place. And so the idea was, don't worry. Don't worry about how dilapidated or unappealing your house seems to be. We want it, right? We'll (laughs) we'll buy it. We buy ugly houses. Don't fear coming to us. We'll give you a deal. And this is our Lord, right? He buys ugly ugly souls. He's after wayward souls. We don't have to be perfect to start dealing with him. We don't even have to be good to start dealing with him. To start dealing with our Lord and Savior, all we have to do is admit that we're not good, admit that we're not perfect, admit that we need his mercy. And sometimes that's a little bit of a mistake that we make, Jesus, in our relationship with you. We kind of think, well, if I want to really get serious about my prayer life, if I really want to get serious about my faith, if I want to take steps forward in the path to holiness, well, first, I need to get my act together. I need to stop sinning in this way or to build this certain habit or to overcome this personality defect or this vice. And that's simply not the way it works. The sick are in need of a doctor. And Jesus has come to call not the righteous, but sinners. 
And so we can't kind of think, well, yeah, I'll deal with our Lord and I'll have a relationship with Jesus. But first, let me fix myself in some way. That's precisely the point. Right? We can't fix ourselves. He is our Savior. Unless we let him find us as lost sheep and he's coming to look for us, well, we'll remain lost. And unless we let him heal us, well, we'll remain sick. He is the answer. Jesus, this gives us such a great confidence in you that not only do you welcome sinners, but you're looking for them. You pursue them. You come after us in our sinfulness. St. Faustina writes in her diary of divine mercy, All grace flows from mercy, and the last hour abounds with mercy for us. Let no one doubt concerning the goodness of God. Even if a person's sins were as dark as night, God's mercy is stronger than our misery. One thing alone is necessary, that the sinner set ajar the door of his heart, be it ever so little, to let in a ray of God's merciful grace, and then God will do the rest. What a consoling thought, and Jesus pursues us, especially in the last moment. We could say he loves last-minute victories. He loves last quarter, last-minute comebacks. It's like a team that's way behind in the last two minutes of a basketball game or a football game, and then all of a sudden they pull it out in the end. This is what our Lord wants to do for souls. The last hour, the last hour of our life, when we're still lost, it abounds with mercy for us. I came to seek it to save what was lost. Jesus, thank you. And help me never to despair, never to despair of heaven, never to despair of your forgiveness, never to despair of your help. Whether my trial is my sinfulness, overcoming some habit of sin, or whether my trial is dealing with some fall that was unexpected and I thought I had gotten over, or whether it's something more passive and uh, less obviously sinful, some cross or difficulty that you put into my life. Help me never to despair of your help, never to despair of your mercy. As today's Gospel Antiphon says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. It's a promise of our Lord. If we go to him confidently, if we go to him persistently, he will help us. He will give us rest. He will pull us through any trial. And so he comes after us, like the shepherd going after the lost sheep, like the woman looking for the lost coin, which is another image that he gives in today's gospel. And we too, when we recognize who he is for us, we're constantly looking for him. And two people looking for each other can't help to meet each other. We look for Jesus, we look for you, Lord, in our sinfulness, in our trials, and you look for us in the same situations. And so how can we fail to meet our Lord? I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them to effect my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord. My guardian angel, intercede for me.